Hello, everyone, and welcome to our virtual Wilkes-Barre Connect Spotlight Series. Um, my name is Shawnee Muhammad, and today we have the pleasure of hearing from some of our area's incredible industrial warehousing and manufacturing related companies. Um, and we have a really great lineup of speakers here to share what they do and help showcase the wide range of career opportunities that can be pursued within these types of fields right here in NEPA. Um, we will hear from our two featured speakers, John T. Catch and Christine Jensen, and our three spotlight speakers, Rich Kozik, Alex Grover, and Dr. Justin Goldston. But before we jump in, our Wilkes-Barre Connect Spotlight Series events would not be possible without the continued support of Penn State Wilkes-Barre through the Invent Penn State Initiative. Um, so at this time, I'd like to welcome Dr. Dale Jones, Chancellor of Penn State Wilkes-Barre to share some opening remarks and introduce our featured speakers. Dr. Jones. Greetings, everyone. Welcome again to the Wilkes-Barre Connect Spotlight Series Speakers Event. I'm Dale Jones, Chancellor and Chief Academic Officer of Penn State Wilkes-Barre. Penn State Wilkes-Barre is honored to be the sponsor of this preeminent regional Spotlight Speakers Program. Today, we feature our first Spotlight Speakers of this 2021 year. Penn State Wilkes-Barre looks forward to working closely with the Chamber of Commerce and Wilkes-Barre Connect throughout 2021 to continue to bring you terrific speakers. Thank you for being with us for today's superb program. We start this year off with a big bang by bringing you two featured speakers along with three spotlight speakers. Now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce our featured speakers. Our first feature speaker is Mr. John T. Catch, Executive Director of the Keystone Development Partnership where he has been specializing in managing Pennsylvania industry partnership workforce development projects since 2005. John is currently working on several projects in concert with the Pennsylvania Apprenticeship and Training Office and the Department of Labor Office of Apprenticeship to promote the acceleration and expansion of registered apprenticeship programs. Mr. T. Catch and his organization provide technical assistance to employers, unions, and other organizations to develop, register, and implement registered apprenticeship programs. Our second speaker is Ms. Christine Jensen, Site Administrator of Pennsylvania Career Link, Luzerne County, overseeing offices in Wilkes-Barre and Hazleton. Career Link is the region's largest employment and business services agency in Luzerne County assisting both job seekers and employers. Prior to joining Pennsylvania CareerLink, Christine served the city of Wilkes-Barre as its human resources director for 21 years. Ms. Jensen has a Bachelor of Arts degree from the Catholic University of America. She has maintained her senior professional in human resources certification since 1997. She is also an SHRM Senior Certified professional, professional and a Certified Workforce Development Professional with the Management Services Endorsement. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John T. Catch and Ms. Christine Jensen. Hi, and thank you for the introduction and for inviting me to discuss the Northeastern Pennsylvania Manufacturing Partnership. I've been managing the 12 County Manufacturing Industry Partnership in Northeastern Pennsylvania since about 2007. So you're probably wondering, what is an industry partnership? Well, around 2005, the state took an in-depth look at all the industries that are important to the economic success of Pennsylvania. 12 industries were identified where the state wanted to provide investment funding, manufacturing, healthcare, and building and construction were the top industries identified. Through the industry partnerships, the Pennsylvania Department of Labor and Industry provides funding support to convene business leader meetings focused on identifying industry-specific needs. An example of these needs could include workforce training, access to capital, infrastructure, policy, or other issues. The Northeastern Pennsylvania Manufacturing Partnership is a multi-employer collaborative comprised of regional manufacturers that work with local workforce and economic development boards, education, and other community partners 
to address workforce and other competitive needs of the manufacturing sector. Our partnerships members include employers spread across Northeastern Pennsylvania. The regional workforce development boards in Northeast PA, that would be the Luzerne Schuylkill, Lackawanna County, Pocono counties, and Northern Tier workforce development boards collaborate in order to enhance employer engagement throughout the next generation industry partnership model. The underlying goal of the manufacturing partnership is addressing industry needs based on a business-led model process to better understand industry priorities. Our partnerships business leaders identified three areas of concentration. First, they wanted to establish and grow a sustainable partnership. Second, they wanted to promote business to business networking. And third, probably most importantly, they wanted to develop and market career pathways. In addition to business leaders, the partnership engages 57 individuals from 32 unique public partners. Included are Northeast Workforce Development Boards, Economic Development Agencies, Educational Providers, Industry Associations, and other organizations. The partnership received a new funding round in 2019 that supports training opportunities for the employer's current workforce. The partnership's business leaders and various community organizations meet in Northeastern Pennsylvania to address issues that help the industry to grow and to compete. Like all networks, the Northeastern Pennsylvania Manufacturing Partnership strength grows with its size. We are continuing to look for new members and encouraging other manufacturing business leaders to join us. So if you're a manufacturing business leader and you're interested in learning more or attending a future partnership meeting, you can ask our friends at the Wilkes-Barre Connect to pass along my contact information. I'd like to share with you a couple projects that our partnerships business leaders recently completed. One priority identified by our partnership business leaders was discovering our region's public partners who offered resources and support for our local manufacturing employers. This project started simply by asking local workforce development boards, the economic boards, chambers of commerce, Pennsylvania Career Link offices, our educational partners, industry associations, and others to enter information about their organizations into an Excel spreadsheet. From there, this project led by our partnerships marketing committee evolved to become the Northeast PA Manufacturing Merge Resource Guide. The Northeast PA Manufacturing Merge is a digital resource guide created exclusively for Northeastern Pennsylvania manufacturers. It's designed to make it easy for manufacturers to find the support and resources they need. Our goal is to update this information annually. Please feel free to reach out to me if you would like me to send you the link to the resource guide. In our second project, which probably was our most important project, our employer partners identified filling open job positions as their highest priority and their biggest challenge. The career opportunities vary greatly and offer prospects for individuals with little to no experience and to those with advanced degrees. Whether you're a high school student, a college student, a recent graduate, an experienced worker, or someone who just wants to try a new career, manufacturing may be the opportunity that you're looking for. I couldn't even begin to count the number of times that I toured a manufacturing facility and heard a similar story. That's where the employer just added a huge new building addition, purchased millions of dollars worth of manufacturing equipment, but was not able to find enough job seekers to provide the work. Are you aware that manufacturing accounts for more than 10% of all jobs in Pennsylvania and compared to other industries, manufacturing careers in Pennsylvania pay higher than average wages? As I mentioned before, manufacturing offers good job prospects for workers with various levels of education. Employers offer, often offer training, including registered apprenticeship programs, that can create career advancement opportunities for their employees. Today's manufacturing jobs provide employees with highly marketable skills, including operating equipment, working with computer, 
in fixing robotic machines. These skills are easily transferable, allowing workers opportunities for career advancement and mobility. Skilled workers are in high demand in the field of manufacturing too. High-tech manufacturing skills include writing code, editing code, programming, and more. Engineer technicians, quality assurance, and supervision occupation all play an essential part in keeping Pennsylvania running. Experienced workers often possess a variety of skills that make them a great fit in the field of manufacturing. My organization has a contract with the U.S. Department of Labor and the Pennsylvania Apprenticeship and Training Office to provide technical assistance to employers wanting to develop and register apprenticeship programs. More and more manufacturers are becoming involved in apprenticeship programs each day. These programs provide workers with advanced skills, a nationally recognized credential, great job opportunities, but without the college debt. Registered apprenticeship programs may be right for you. In response to this need to fill open jobs, the partnership formed a marketing committee made up of business leaders and public partners. The committee oversaw a project that recently resulted in the development of a series of four videos to reach job seekers and to make them aware of manufacturing career opportunities in Northeastern Pennsylvania. I would like to share one of those videos with you at this time. If you'll just give me a moment. I actually found this job during my last semester of college. I was looking for full-time work after finishing my industrial engineering degree and I was immediately drawn to the manufacturing industry. Um, there's a lot of opportunity here and um, as soon as I visited the plant, I really just felt like it was a good place for me to start my career. One thing that's great about manufacturing is that you have the ability to apply more set skills like math or engineering, but there's also a lot of creativity and innovation that comes with manufacturing as well. So you're not really pigeonholed into just numbers or figures. It's a lot of out-of-the-box thinking and creativity that's also involved. Before I went to college and started looking for jobs, I pretty much assumed that there wasn't really any manufacturing around here. But then when I started applying, you know, all these companies started popping up things I've passed all the time and never took a second glance, but they're out there, they're looking for people. A lot of them are willing to train you too, so just gotta put yourself out there. I would definitely recommend a career in manufacturing. There's so much opportunity and growth and it isn't the dirty old factory like it, most people think of it anymore. There's a lot of high tech, high dollar things out in this area anymore that people wouldn't expect. Most companies in Northeast PA, I would consider smaller companies that provide for larger companies in bigger areas. But the nice thing about a smaller company is you know everyone from the top down, whether it's the CEO or just another coworker. It's a nice family type atmosphere and you know everyone on a personal basis. After growing up in Philadelphia and then moving to Pittsburgh for college, I didn't really expect to find myself in a smaller area like Northeast Pennsylvania, but I found such a great opportunity here at General Dynamics Land Systems that I couldn't pass it up, and Northeast Pennsylvania has really become home for me now. I love my career in manufacturing. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, you may have noticed that all of the manufacturers and the employers featured in this video are right in your backyard. They're all in Northeastern Pennsylvania and they're all members of our Northeast Pennsylvania Manufacturing Partnership. The other thing that they all have in common is they all have job openings and they're looking for um, uh, workers with various skill levels. 
So at this time, I would like to thank you again for allowing me to share uh, the Northeastern Pennsylvania Manufacturing Partnership information with you. If you're interested in learning more about the partnership, please feel free to contact me. At this time, I would like to turn the presentation over to my colleague, Christine Jensen. Christine has a wealth of knowledge to connect job seekers in manufacturing to open job opportunities. So Christine, can you take it away, please? Thanks, John. And thanks to the Wyoming Valley Chamber of Commerce, as well as Penn State University. We appreciate the opportunity to be with you today. Um, I'm with the Luzerne Schuylkill Workforce Development Board. We're part of the public workforce system. And some of the programs that we fund include funding the PA Career Link offices in Luzerne and Schuylkill counties. We have three offices to serve you, one in Hazleton, one in Pottsville, and one in Wilkesbury. If you're not familiar with the PA Career Link, we're here to work with you if you're a job seeker or, or an employer to help make that connection between the individual looking for the job and the employer, the business that has a job and needs the person that is the right fit for them. If you haven't seen our website or haven't seen it in a while, I'd certainly encourage you to go online at www.pacareerlink.pa.gov to explore it. There's thousands of jobs listed on there. Um, it's akin to an Indeed job board online, but better because it comes with support. Our, the staff at the PA Career Link uh, is there to help you every step of the way, whether you're a job seeker or an employer. We have career advisors that can assist you, uh, regardless of your situation, uh, whether you're a student um, or you're, you're out of school, but newly out of high school or college, and you're, you're looking to find your way into your career. Uh, if you're unemployed or underemployed, and uh, you're looking for an opportunity, or perhaps you're further on in your career and you're looking for a career change. We can help anybody with finding the right career for them. And that's what we wanna do. We wanna find you a career, not just a job. Um, as John alluded to a little bit earlier, uh, there are career pathways in every industry. Certainly in manufacturing, there are many, many ways to uh, progress through a career in manufacturing. And there's different points at which you can enter. You know, if, you're, if you wanna enter as a uh, entry level individual, you can certainly work your way up into uh, more skilled positions that are going to offer a higher wage. And you can also um, uh, enter at different levels and um, depending on what your skill level is going in. Um, with regard to manufacturing and the other large industries in our area, which also include transportation, distribution, healthcare, and food processing, there are really wonderful career pathways that we can discuss with you. One of our counselors can discuss with you uh, and talk to you about the opportunities within manufacturing as well as those other industries that I mentioned. Um, and again, with that high concentration of healthcare, manufacturing, food processing, tr transportation and distribution, you might say, well, I'm not really interested in any of those, those industries. They, you know, they don't interest me. You'd be surprised. They may have occupations within that industry that, 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 that are a good fit for you. Um, you know, every industry anymore has IT. Uh, occupations within it. I can't think of any that don't. They have HR, uh, human resources positions, uh, accounting, finance positions. So you may find a, 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 a an employer in an industry that you never thought about exploring um, that has the exact right job for you. So don't rule it out um, because you're thinking, well, what do I know about manufacturing or what do I know about healthcare? There could be the perfect fit for you there. And that's where our, employ our employees at the PA Career Link can really assist you. We have great relationships with the majority of the employers in 
Luzerne and Schuylkill counties. We know where the jobs are. Uh, we can give you advice regarding what those high priority occupations are, where the jobs are in terms of which companies are hiring, where the growth is predicted to be over the coming years, what wages you can expect to earn. So we have all that information at our fingertips and we're here to assist you. Uh, we need you to reach out to us and engage so we can get you working one-on-one -on -one with one of our staff members so that we can help you find that right fit. Again, that career, not just a job, a career. If you don't have the skills for today's jobs, you know, and that may, that may be the case, especially if you're a little later in your career or you are um, looking to make a career change or perhaps you, know, you recently graduated from high school or college and you're just not quite sure where to go, um, again, we can uh, help you by giving you information about those high priority occupations so you get training for a job that which actually exists. And in some cases, we also have training funding up to $10,000 that we can help you offset the cost of or some of the cost of getting training in a high priority occupation. So if you're interested in learning more about how the Pennsylvania Career Link may be able to help you get training dollars, please give us a call and we can explain the whole process to you. So I hope this information was helpful. Again, thanks to our partners at the Wyoming Valley Chamber and Penn State University. And please don't hesitate to reach out to your local PA Career Link office. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, John and Christine for sharing. Um, up next, we have our first spotlight, Rich Kozik. Uh, Rich is the president of Ito Denki USA, Inc., located at Two Great Valley Boulevard in the Hanover Industrial Business Park in Wilkes-Barre. Rich is a graduate of the University of Scranton with a bachelor's degree in business management. He has been with Ito Denki since July of 1996, at which time he worked with the site selection team on a location for their US operations. Um, and in November of 1996, they incorporated in Pennsylvania and selected Wilkes-Barre for their US headquarters. And they began production in April of 1997. Rich first held a position as national sales manager and then as VP of sales. Uh, and in August of 2013, he was promoted to president uh, where, he was, where he became responsible for their North American operations. In June of 2015, they purchased 19 acres here on the Great Valley Boulevard and they moved to their new factory in June of 2016. As their company continued to grow and meet market demands, they're currently considering an expansion to their current facility. And I'm thrilled to welcome Rich to the virtual stage to talk a little bit more about Ito Denki and the great work that they do. So welcome, Rich. Hello, I'm Rich Kosick, president of Ito Denki USA. Today, I'd like to give you a little bit more information about Ito Denki USA and the products that we manufacture here on Great Valley Boulevard. We have 46,000 square feet and of that 46,000, about 20,000 is for manufacturing. As you can see in the picture, uh, we have the machinery and air conditioned space for our workers. In our warehouse, uh, we have enough space to bring in weekly air freight shipments and monthly ocean freight with the components that we need for manufacturing. The Power Molar 24 is a 24 volt motorized roller, molar being the combination of motor and roller. The 24 volts is a safer voltage with much more power than AC current, and it's used in conveying systems to be able to control and move articles zone by zone on the conveyor. There's one motorized roller, and it's slave to non-powered idler rollers using a photo eye to look across the conveyor zone to tell when something is present. To give you an idea how that works, uh, the motorized roller includes a 24 volt DC motor, a planetary gearbox, a spring-loaded end cap that would allow you to retract the shaft to fit it into the conveyor sections. And also some of our products even have mechanical brakes to be able to hold the articles in place. The way the power molar operates is by inserting everything into the conveyor tube and then holding that to the shaft, the outer shell rotates to be able to move the articles along on the conveyor. 
One motorized roller is typically used again with non-powered idler rollers to form that conveyor zone. That way we have the ultimate control by providing on-off signals to that one motor to be able to move totes along the conveyor line. Now that we have control of that zone, we're able to use what we call run on demand operation, where we're only turning the zone on when necessary to move the articles along either zone to zone or along the conveyor continuously. But you'll notice as the boxes clear the zones, the conveyor shuts off, the energy savings is tremendous. Some of the applications that we found in the United States started with the US Postal Service. US Postal Service is known for moving their totes or tubs through their facilities. They also have workers that are in close proximity to the conveyor. So it's very important that they have a safe type of conveyance and they've adopted the motorized roller starting in 1997. Some of the applications that they have uh, along their carousels where they do sorting to the totes, those tubs that you see on the conveyor are filled, filled with the mail that's being transferred along through the carousel that's on top of the picture and dropped into the tubs. Then those tubs are rejected from the carousel and brought out along the belt to our motorized rollers that you could see in the foreground. That way we're able to control the starting and stopping of the tubs as they're going to be passed down the conveyor line to the postal vehicles that are going to carry them out to the, to the destination. The green totes that are shown in the picture, and you could see our motorized rollers underneath those, they move the totes along and you could see as those are stopped, they're buffered with space in between so they're not contacting or bang, banging into each other. That mail is being brought up to the carousel, as you could see in the picture, and then dropped down into the tubs. So it's a zone by zone movement throughout the facility. One of the largest operations that we have for the US Postal Service is in Greensboro, North Carolina. That picture that you see has applications including up to 3000 of our motorized rollers in that one facility. That facility was installed in 1998, so you could tell there's a long history of these type of applications, moving totes and tote handling. One of the other industries that we have access to and, and have used motorized rollers in large quantities is the tire industry. To give you an idea, on the top of the picture, you could see one of the tires that's on a shelf uh, that's coming forward. Uh, those tires are stocked and stored on the shelves so that when the cavity of the press becomes available, they could sequence the tires from storage down to the, to the uh, presses. Uh, our rollers are used on the belts in these applications because that tire before it's pressed is in a soft or a green tire form. So we have to be careful not to let the tires touch and we have to be careful as we move them along on the conveyor section that they don't stop too long and the tire would actually seep, the rubber would seep around the tire, from the tire around the rollers. So on this picture, you could see the zones that are formed underneath that red line. Uh, you could see the conveyor zones uh, that are belted in this, in this uh, application. But on the side of the conveyor, you could see our conveyor control and then the bracket that's holding our motorized roller in place. That forms that zone to keep the tires from contacting each other throughout the operation of the press operation. On the other side of the press, this is a finished tire and those tires are ejected out when they're still hot and they have to be held for a little while to cool down. But even though it's a finished tire, it's moved with motorized rollers now on a roller conveyor to move throughout the facility uh, from the manufacturing to the storage areas. The latest application that we've had for motorized rollers is in the e-commerce sector. And this is pictures of American Eagle Outfitters that is in Hazleton, Pennsylvania. The facility is almost a million square feet. And in their facility, they have over 11,000 of our motors in operation. The picture shows, shown here is the totes that are used for uh, carrying the products through their facility. To the right, you could see the, the aisles where workers walk up and down to pick the items that are needed to form an order. They're put into the totes and then the tote is pushed onto the center lane, which moves through their facility, again, keeping the totes separated with zero pressure accumulation so they're not banging into each other and then down to the, to the sorting system. 
You'll notice the blue totes that are suspended in the air, and you'll notice the black boxes of our, our, our control cards uh, that are in the picture to the right. That's bringing those totes up to a sorting system where the gentleman is standing in the middle. And then the articles are brought from the totes and dropped down to where an order selector takes the article and puts it into a, a slot where the order is being hand selected and hand built. The blue totes now on the carts are used to move to packing and shipping. But up until that point, a lot of motorized rollers are part of the process to be able to deliver the articles up to the, to the pick stations. Ito Denki has been doing motorized roller applications, as I mentioned before, since 1998. That picture of Greensboro, North Carolina is shown there. We also have heavier duty tote handling for pallet applications. The bottom picture shows 2000 pound pallets of circuit boards that are being moved through a facility in Hayward, California, where we had originally installed that application back in 1997. This is the team, including Mr. Ito and Ted, uh, that we've had. They were in for, from Japan for the opening of our new building. Uh, at this picture shows back in 2015, where we had about uh, 20 employees. Currently, we have 50 employees here on Green, Great Valley Boulevard, where we manufacture the motorized roller for Canada, US, Latin America, and South America. Thank you for your time. Awesome, thank you, Rich. Our next spotlight for this event is Alex Grover. Alex is the president and COO of I2M, a manufacturer specializing in advanced polymer film extrusion, printing, and laminating. I2M's performance and decorative products serve a diverse array of industries, including residential and commercial construction, medical, and automotive. Since joining I2M, Alex is focused on driving results by redefining what it means to work in manufacturing today. Welcome, Alex. Hi, my name is Alex Grover and I am president and COO of I2M. First, a big thanks to the Greater Wyoming Valley Chamber for the opportunity to share the story of I2M and of manufacturers nationwide. My objective for today's presentation is hopefully to change your perspective on manufacturing a bit. Maybe you've considered a job in manufacturing, but you don't know where to start, or maybe you aren't sure if it's for you. I hope this can answer some of those frequently searched questions. So first, a bit about I2M. Uh, very quickly, I2M is a manufacturer of the most innovative flexible polymer film products on the market. Our team combines cutting edge technical expertise with exceptional customer care to deliver flawless results for our customers. We serve a global marketplace from our headquarters in Northeastern Pennsylvania. If you've ever taken a shower, hopefully you have, uh, put a PVC bumper sticker on your car or gone for a swim in a pool, it's likely that you've come into contact with one of our printed and extruded flexible polymer films. Our decades of experience are matched only by our deeply entrepreneurial spirit, which results in these world-class products. And we're all about our culture and our team. Uh, we pride ourselves at I2M of having a strong value system of teamwork, innovation, agility, and results. And as we continue on our journey to deliver results for our customers, we recognize that we need talented team members in order to do that. And with our goal to grow our team, we want to do that by changing the way people think about careers in manufacturing. So let's talk about that, right? When people think about manufacturing, they often think about what it looked like 50, 20, even as recently as 10 years ago. So I did a quick Google search to get a sense of what people actually search for when they Google manufacturing careers. So the first uh, question or search that came up is, are manufacturing jobs boring, right? When people envision manufacturing, I think they often picture people day after day at an assembly line doing the same thing over and over and over until they keel over. And this is such an old fashioned and frankly incorrect way of thinking about manufacturing. If you look at any job posting site, you'll see that there are hundreds of different types of jobs in manufacturing. At I2M alone, we have over 25 different types of production jobs, as well as a multitude of leadership roles. We also offer technical jobs in a variety of areas, including color matching, formulating, R&D, and lab work. 
every single day is different, exciting, and there is very little room for boredom as you can ask anyone on the I2M team. It certainly is not standing around in an office making copies. The second question people ask is, are manufacturing jobs old fashioned? So at I2M, we are modernizing what it means to be a manufacturer. This year, we installed the I2M Fitness Center, which is available 24 seven for all team members to work out. We're working on kicking off a variety of health and wellness initiatives that will prioritize the well-being of our team. Another example, during the pandemic, we also found that many of our team members were having trouble getting to work since their kids were engaged in remote learning at home. When we learned that, we knew we had to support them. So we utilized empty conference room space, especially since most of our meetings with vendors had gone virtual, and hired a full-time teacher to assist. While their parents were at work at I2M, students were safely engaged in their remote learning classrooms. If they had questions, downtime, or needed help with homework, our teacher would be able to jump in to assist. So these are two examples of why manufacturing jobs are not old. They're modern, and frankly, they're filled with innovative thinkers and problem solvers. The third question people ask is, are manufacturing jobs bad for the environment? And the answer is not at all. Manufacturers tend to be some of the businesses most focused on innovating and driving towards sustainability. At I2M, we believe in taking action to drive those tangible results and apply that same philosophy to responsibility and sustainability. Operating a sustainable business frankly reflects the core values upon which I2M was built and the agile, innovative spirit that allows us to thrive in evolving marketplace. It also reflects our view of what a successful future looks like for our customers, our community, and our planet. So a couple of quick examples. Uh, this year, we've launched a slew of sustainability initiatives, including the first sustainability certified waterproofing membranes on the market. We produ produced almost zero manufactured scrap in 2020 alone and diverted uh, millions of pounds of plastic scrap from entering waste streams. We've also developed partnerships with nonprofits like Susan G. Komen Foundation um, in developing the first pink, yes, pink pool membrane with a portion of the profits supporting the fight against breast cancer. A final example is during COVID. You saw nationwide manufacturers mobilizing, innovating, and finding ways to fight COVID. And we were able to do the same. We mobilized our operations to produce gowns for hospital staff and first responders nationwide. Our efforts resulted in an award from the House of Representatives and more importantly, helped keep thousands of healthcare workers safe during the battle against COVID. These are the types of contributions you can make when you work for a manufacturing company and find a career there. The final question that I saw people asked is, are manufacturing jobs dead end? And the answer is no. There are so many career paths you can pursue in manufacturing. At I2M, we prefer to promote from within which is why we have had shipping specialists convert to lab technicians and machine operators become production managers. But it really isn't just what is happening on the production floor. At I2M and all manufacturers, there's an incredible team that supports the mission of delivering results for customers. It starts with purchasing and finance, the team involved in selecting, negotiating, and ordering raw material inputs that are critical for our production process. In our lab, we have technical directors, process te technicians, and lab technicians, all of whom are responsible for producing new products, identifying new methods of production, and conducting quality checks to ensure the product we manufacture is of the highest quality. Operations and maintenance are critical to ensuring our facility runs smoothly 24-7. On the customer facing side, the sales team, customer service, and our shipping specialists serve as the face of I2M, ensuring our customers are thrilled with production and that they receive their material quickly and efficiently. And these are just a few examples of the diverse array of careers that are available when you start a career in manufacturing. The last thing I'll say about why manufacturing is so fulfilling and can be a fulfilling career path is simply due to the tangible nature of the job. So if you think about what people do as hobbies, right, or to relax, 
they often cook or garden. And the reason is largely because it's very satisfying. The fruits of your labor and your hard work are right in front of you at the end of your task. Manufacturing is the exact same way. There's something so fulfilling about playing a part in the creation, the development, and the production of a physical, tangible product. Whether you play a role in the production, the packaging, the purchasing, the shipping, or the sales part of the job, every day you feel, and I certainly feel, satisfied about the results of hard work. We have had so many success stories here at I2M and likely thousands more in manufacturing plants across the country. That person's story and that person's career could be yours. So if you're interested, you can reach out to us anytime by emailing hiring at i2m.us.com, or I would encourage you to check out all of the manufacturing jobs in our area that are open on Indeed and on other job search sites. There are so many out there and it's critical that we support this growing industry within our area. Thank you again to the Wyoming Valley Chamber of Commerce for the opportunity, and we look forward to receiving your application. Awesome, thank you so much, Alex. Our final spotlight for this event is Dr. Justin Goldston. Dr. Goldston is an assistant professor of project and supply chain management at Penn State Wilkes-Barre, where his research is focused on blending the practices of supply chain management, emerging technologies, and sustainability to create positive global change. Dr. Goldston is a research facility affiliate for the Center for the Business of Sustainability at Smule College of Business at Penn State, as well as an active contributing faculty member to the Sustainability Institute at Penn State. Outside of the institution, Goldston is an executive on the International Supply Chain Education Alliance's International Standards Board and is the author of the forthcoming book, AI for Good, Achieving Sustainability Through Citizen Science and Organizational Citizenship. Dr. Goldston has over 20 years of experience working with organizations around the world, such as Intel, Siemens, and Blue Buffalo on business performance, business performance improvement, organizational change, and enterprise-wide digital transformation initiatives. Goldston has also led and assisted in the development of supply chain management, sustainability, and business analytics programs and courses at Georgetown University, Texas A&M University, Rasmussen University, Davenport University, and North Carolina Wesleyan College, and has evaluated multiple doctoral programs as well. Goldston is the author of multiple peer-reviewed journal articles on supply chain management, sustainability, and innovative technologies of critical success factors in ERP implementations, and is a five-time TEDx speaker where he discusses emerging technologies such as blockchain and artificial intelligence. So with so much great experience under his belt, we are really excited to have him here to share with us today. So welcome, Dr. Goldston. Hi, everyone. I am Justin Goldston, coordinator and assistant professor of the Project and Supply Chain Management Program at Penn State Wilkes-Barre. Given the pandemic has increased the awareness of the supply chain management and project management disciplines, along with the increased acceleration of the adoption of emerging technologies and automation. And given that that is my industry background as well as my research interests, I have been asked to speak at a number of international supply chain conferences around the world, such as the Global Women's and Supply Chain Conference in Singapore, the SAPIX Conference in Johannesburg, South Africa, as well as the Sustainable Supply Chain Conference in Shanghai, China. And during that time, uh, not only have I been able to collaborate with a number of industry supply chain leaders, it has allowed me to, to take off the, the blinders in terms of supply chain from a US perspective and view supply chain management from a global perspective. And, and with that, we have taken a closer look in the project and supply chain program and we have revamped and updated the program so that we look at supply chain and project management from a, a current state uh, pandemic lens and to also look at it from a future state supply chain lens in that where are we gonna go in terms of supply chain management as well as project management. So within supply chain management, 
we start out with the foundations of supply chain management. We look at uh, distrib distribution, we look at uh, logistics, but we also look at the emerging technologies, such as how, how will artificial intelligence impact the future of supply chain management? How will, supply, how will artificial intelligence impact the future of project management? Whether it be an agile methodology, whether it be a waterfall, or whether it be a hybrid methodology. We also look at how does emerging technology such as blockchain impact supply chain management, such as IBM Trade Lens and, and their introduction into the maritime industry. So we look at all of these emerging technologies, we look at all of these innovations that are essentially transforming the supply chain and project management industry. And along with that within the program, not only, not only will students leave with a project and supply chain management undergraduate degree, we have built the program to position these students to also receive a certificate in supply chain management, as well as a certificate in ERP with SAP. So once students leave this program, they are going to be immediately marketable with the certifications, but also they're going to have a, it's going to be a differentiator in the curriculum in that we're discussing these technologies that based on my research is not being discussed in a lot of other institutions. So we're creating a differentiator within, within the, 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 the Wilkes-Barre area and Scranton area. So along with that, in addition to, to, to the content, uh, once with the individuals that I have been meeting with in these conferences, I have interviews that, that students will review uh, from individuals such as Abe Eskenazi, which is the CEO of the Association of Supply Chain Management. I have interviews with Sherry Heinisch, who is a partner at IBM. She's also known as, as a supply chain queen. I also have interviews with Peter McMorris, which was an executive at Unilever for a number of years. So in addition to, to some of the industry leaders within the supply chain discipline, we, all, we also have a number of, of, of CEOs and founders uh, that come in and guest lecture uh, in the areas of logistics, in the areas of supply chain management, in the areas of manufacturing within the, within the community, as well as from a global perspective. And I would say the most exciting, the most exciting piece of this program is that we have TEDx Wilkes-Barre. So it is the campus TEDx event that is organized and presented by the Project and Supply Chain Management Program. So although the pandemic has, has had us to move the the March the the inaugural March event to to the to the fall of 2021. We have the student body president from MIT coming to speak. We have the student body president from Yale coming to speak. We have the winners of the AI Nittany Alliance Challenge coming to speak. We have Sherry Heinisch, the supply chain queen, coming to speak at this program. So we have some of the some some very large names from a student from a student body perspective, as well as from an industry perspective, that will that will come to speak at, at this annual event. And we always encourage students from the project and supply chain management program to to assist in the coordination of of this event. Now. One thing I always explain to these students is that if you have that you that you help organize a TEDx event, that's another differentiator. So it's my view that you know you have to be marketable once you leave Penn State University. And we are providing our students with the tools to be marketable and to have a competitive advantage. So if you're interested, if you are Anyone else is interested in this program, uh, please reach out to me. 
Uh, I can be reached at JLG Justin Lee Golston 566 at PSU.edu. And you can also reach out to me on, on LinkedIn. Um, if you want to see some of those presentations, some of the content that we discuss within this program, uh, you can search my name on, on YouTube. And some of those international conferences have been published uh, by those organizers uh, on YouTube. So if you have any questions, please reach out to me. And thanks for listening. Okay, thank you, Dr. Goldston, for sharing and finishing us off strong. And with that concludes our lineup of speakers for today's Spotlight event. Um, we are thrilled to be able to bring awareness to these awesome businesses and organizations and highlight the great opportunities that they bring to Northeastern Pennsylvania. Um, I love that with all of our speakers here today, in addition to sharing why manufacturing related jobs are such a promising career path, we were able to actually show you some of the industrial park tenants that bring those possibilities to the forefront and come behind that with a local academic institution that has supporting degree programs to set yourself up with the skills to pursue these fields down the line. So you can see holistically how solid a pathway there is for establishing a career in manufacturing uh, right here in NEPA. And I think that's incredible. Um, so if you'd like to reach out to any of the uh, speakers from uh, today's event, you can certainly visit their websites for more information. Um, but before we close out the event, um, I wanna share a quick resource for any job seekers in the area in Luzerne County. Our local PA career link has a number of ways for you to find out about new jobs in the area. You can text hot jobs to 64600 to receive text alerts on available jobs. And if you're looking for a more one-on-one -on -one counseling experience when it comes to your career, you can also text hired to 64600 and our local PA career link team will work with you to schedule a no cost counseling session to start planning and launching your new career. So I strongly encourage you to take advantage of these opportunities if you see fit. Um, they can be very, very helpful in your job search. Um, I want to again thank Dr. Jones, Chancellor of Penn State Wilkes-Barre for sponsoring our spotlight events. Um, again, we couldn't do it without your partnership and your support through the Invent Penn State initiative. Um, a huge thank you to our featured speakers, John T. Catch and Christine Jensen for your contributions. And of course, to our three incredible spotlights, Rich Kozik, Alex Grover, and Dr. Justin Goldston for participating today. And with that concludes our first Wilkes-Barre Connect Spotlight Series event for 2021. Um, so be on the lookout for our next installment in April. We are really excited to bring that to you as well. Um, so with that, I hope you all stay safe and thank you for watching.